Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Forrest. I invest in stuff, and I believe that everybody should, too. It is my mission to get people like me and you to start investing. Um, I never say that. I was just trying to rhyme real quick. But uh, let's talk about this whole Ukraine-Russia situation from an investing perspective. And let me go ahead and throw out my little disclaimer for anybody who thinks it's bad to profit off of the situations. Um global events will impact the value of portfolio and so if you have a retirement account right now i imagine that you're down bad uh spy is taking a massive shit uh i think we were on our way to like 460 before all of this i don't have a chart up in front of me maybe i'll throw it up when i edit this video uh and it dipped down to like under 420. uh for those of you who don't know what spy is spy is a collection of you know our 500 biggest and best companies in the United States, right? It just rep represents, you know, the, the powerhouse of US GDP, blah, 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 blah. So it is important to hedge against these events or to at least take some active measures when it happens. So what is what is hedging? Hedging is basically say, I believe that uh, I'm going to bet that a stock is gonna go from 100 to $200, but I know I might be wrong. I might not be a perfect investor as, you know, we all aren't. So what I'll do is I'll buy a bet in the other direction, um, you know, in a percentage of my portfolio. So maybe 90% of my position is betting the stock moves one way and 10% of my position is betting it moves the other way. What this allows me to do is reduce my risk, right? Reduce my losses if I am wrong. Um, and we'll talk about all different strategies. Actually, we're not gonna talk about the strategies in this video. What we're gonna talk about is the war. So what happens when it's a global conflict well one uh we've sanctioned the shit out of russia uh there's been a ton of sanctions on the country individuals from the country uh russia has a lot of uh, uh commodities uh, mostly oil so we've seen companies like exxon you know look their chart up jump from the 70s up to a high of, of i think 91 um i'm doing this completely from memory by the way guys um don't have a ton of time to to, to edit you know a bunch of graphs into this but uh, the charts, check out, check them out. XOM is, is Exxon Mobil. Um, you know, wheat, uh, I believe Ukraine is a global uh, exporter of wheat. So there's an ETF actually called wheat, W-E-A-T, uh, which has seen some price appreciation. Uh, it's actually been a little bit all over the place, and I am going to pull up uh, some of my charts while I talk about this now, just so I get this exactly right, right? So wheat right now is $10.60. Three cents. If we go to the weekly, we can see that there was a pop up to 12.75. Volume has spiked significantly. Um, so yeah, a ton of people recognize this as a play. Uh, it spiked. Uh, it, is, it is an ETF though. There's some active rebalancing of that ETF. Uh, let's look at Exxon, Zom, uh, as I always pronounce it to myself. I don't know why I do that. Do uh, that. So let's look at the daily for. Exxon and we can see that yeah it was down at $57 in January or in the in the 50s and now we're up to you know 82.20 so some strong plays there uh, these are the types of things that you should think about when there are global events uh, so what do I think this means going forward so uh, in the beginning of this conflict there was a ton of uncertainty as to whether we were you know, what type of sanctions we're going to be in place, the full strength and um, um, impactfulness of those sanctions. A lot of those sanctions have went through. Uh, I don't think there's much else left that we can sanction. Really, what we need to look to is, is the big thing is signs from companies that they're going to do some long term repositioning. We've already seen some companies do this. They've already pulled out of Russia and it's very unlikely that they're going to go back. Um, you know, companies do not like when their assets get seized and nationalized. What do I mean by that? So let's take a step back. Russia, what they've done is kind of retaliation because you know, Putin got up in his feelings because he's uh, getting his ass beat a little bit more than he wanted to, I think. Um, got mad at companies were like, hey, you know, we're pulling out. You're, you're doing some stuff we don't like. You know, um, nobody, I think, or there's actually a lot of companies, especially in tech that, you know, have Ukrainian employees. So it shows their support. And really just for common sense, a lot of companies are pulling out of Russia from a business perspective, right? They're not they're not doing business there. They've shut their doors. A lot of restaurants, global corporations, um, or I should say big companies, things like that, right? So Russia is like, fine, uh, 
you can leave, but we're taking all your stuff. So they took all their stuff and they nationalized these assets. Uh, this isn't good. So imagine you're a company and there's there's always a risk when you do business. If I'm a U.S. company and I'm doing business you know, in another country, uh, we always have to account for, you know, their customs, norms and laws. Uh, but at a, at a minimum, I expect to have some type of security because uh, that's the only way that a marketplace can work. You can't have a, a working global uh, economy uh, if people can just come and seize your assets at any time. You're not going to be willing to make massive purchases. Like, why would I buy a $50 million factory in your country if someone's just going to get upset and then come and take you know that factory from me? I've just incurred a ton of debt probably to buy that asset and now I don't own it anymore, right? So that's what Putin has done uh, to some of the assets of some of the corporations that are there and they're very unlikely uh, or even companies who don't own assets there are very unlikely to want to take on that risk in the future. It's just not a good look. It's not a, it's not good long-term thinking from Putin and certainly, um, you know, is, is short-term impactful to a lot of these companies. So I would look for, again, listening for positioning from companies on what they're going to do um, based on the changes in this region. Now, the war is still happening. We still need to see what happens between Zelensky and Putin. And, you know, Zelensky has shown, I think, that he's unwilling uh, to do anything that impacts the sovereignty of Ukraine. He certainly cares about his people, um, as you know, stated by or get shown by the statements that he's given. Um, but I think he really does believe in a sovereign Ukraine, and uh, it looks like our country, you know, United States and the EU and many other countries also want a sovereign uh, Ukraine. And so from a global economic standpoint, I still expect, you know, we should expect or the outcome that we want is for their exports to return at one point, etc., etc., etc. There's also going to be a large influx of dollars into Ukraine. Let's just go through the possible scenarios right assuming the war ends ukraine still has their sovereignty we're going to rebuild ukraine i uh, believe biden uh i'm gonna have to double check this i don't know if it's passed yet but I, there was a bill that i remember saying with a couple billion dollars to basically invest in ukraine rebuild it think back in world war ii you know japan was bombed we rebuilt japan and we have a great relationship with japan by the way um which is pretty awesome just from a historical standpoint to think about how that all turned out but in any case um we invested a ton of money in rebuilding uh that country um which is good for everyone by the way so what, what one of the things that happens when you rebuild a country is you can build goodwill there and you can create a really good trade partner right so when um you know capitalism when it's working isn't a zero-sum game right so if i can trade and trade resources, trade human capital, uh, intellect. Uh, we can create outcomes and companies and technology that is, you know, bigger uh, than the sum of its parts. You know, some of the, some of those parts being in the U.S., some of those parts being in Ukraine, some of those parts being in Japan. Looking back to my other example, right? So a ton of money flowing into Ukraine. Look for companies that are going to get contracts there, right? So what are the type of businesses? Probably, you know, definitely construction. Uh, people with experience building, uh, you know, I don't even know, but do that research, do that due diligence. That's the exact type of due diligence that I'm trying to do now. So those are the two big categories for me. The first one are global exports. And the second one is the rebuilding of Ukraine. Now there is always the outcome. And I'm only going to say this, that, you know, Ukraine loses quote unquote, they lose their sovereignty. And then now we have to deal with, uh, you know, for example, wheat, you know, they're one of the biggest exporters of wheat. There's going to be some repositioning there. So I would definitely look at, you know, what America is going to do with our oil. If we're going to increase oil output. Um, we should expect the EU in general. We've, we've already seen this to increase their or to uh, for uh, militarization to happen, I should say. Right. So Russia has certainly spooked people, even though they're not having the best time in their conquests of Ukraine. Uh, one life is one life too many. Right. So um, if I'm a company, I would or if I'm a company, if I'm a country, I would rather have a military posture big enough to where um, Russia is not even going to try to shell me. Right. They're not going to start shooting artillery. You know, even if it is in a pointless campaign, I don't want them to even try. Right. So we're going to see, you know, I expect more militarization. Um, they're probably going to buy weapons from the U.S. because we've got more than anybody else. Um, we've got more companies working on weapon tech and things like that. So we're going to start going to see more weapons exports. 
um, you know, funding our you know, military and industrial complex for better or for worse. Um, so look for those things. Those are the types of things that you should be thinking about when these big global events happen. And these big global events, again, um, by no means do I want to trivialize, you know, despite the way I started this video, uh, just for entertainment purposes, the loss of life. Um, but this is what, you know, investing is about. This is what the global economy is about. You know, these things greatly impact your financial future. And again, looking at SPY, you know, you have to be aware that these things can happen. You can't preempt or hedge for, you know, a war breaking out that no one expected. No one can. But again, the other side of when you can't hedge, take active measures. Look for new opportunities. And opportunities are abundant. In any case, that is it. Please do me a favor. It would be awesome for me if you could like this video, subscribe to this video, and share it with two of your friends, maybe three, maybe four. If you're famous, I don't have that many personally, but that is it for this one. My name is Forrest. I invest in stuff. Holy smokes. See you in the next one.